everybody, welcome to the Manalik. I'm John as always, and it's time for a new series on the Manalik Sealed League Update. So every Sunday, I'm going to be doing an update for the next six weeks of the Sealed League that is happening at my local game store. Uh, we do a Sealed League for every single set. This is actually the ninth league that we've been doing. It's probably one of the premier things that my local store does. It's one of the things that the regulars love, and everybody who's tried it out has absolutely loved the format. It's somewhat similar to the friendly sealed leagues that just recently started on MTGO on the past week or so, uh, with a few differences. Uh, I, I actually originally got this league started uh, when our local game store was under a different name. Uh, that store unfortunately closed, but luckily a new one opened up and the, uh, the regulars kind of stuck around in the same location. Uh, but the basics of the league are as follows. We start out with a pretty regular four-round sealed tournament. Uh, everybody gets their six packs. We register the pools so that we make sure that nobody's cheating and nobody's adding in extra cards because this pool will be the one that we play with for the following six weeks. But we play just a normal four-round sealed event. Then we keep that pool together, and each subsequent week we complete four matches on our own time. There's no more sanctioned uh, kind of scheduled tournaments. We just show up generally on the scheduled league night on Tuesdays and play four matches against whoever's available. Uh, we can't play the same person twice in the same week, but we do just play whoever's kind of there and we get all of our matches done. At the end of the opening tournament, as well as the end of every subsequent week, we can buy a booster pack and add that pack to our pool of cards. Uh, in Shadows Over Innistrad, it will of course be a Shadows Over Innistrad pack. In sets like Oath of, Gate Oath of the Gatewatch, where we're playing with two sets, uh, the pack that we can buy usually alternates. So one week it was Battle, the next week it was Oath, and then Battle, Oath, Battle, Oath. But we can open that pack and add all 15 of those cards to our pool. Now that's basically the same as the Friendly Leagues on Magic Online, but we have another change. We have Trading. We can trade with people in the league, and we have a six-point cap in the first and second half of the leagues. A mythic is worth four points, a rare worth three, an uncommon worth two, and a common worth one. So in the first half of the week, we can get six points worth of cards from other people in the league. In the second half of the league, we can get another six points worth of cards from people in the league. So there's a whole trading aspect to our league. So not only are we opening additional packs to make our pool better, we're trading with other people to make our pool better. Now, obviously, no outside cards can come in. Nobody can have their collection be added to it. It has to be packs that you've, or cards that you've opened in packs, but we do have a whole trading thing to it. At the the end of the six weeks, the top 10 advance to a single elimination playoffs. It's a four round playoff with uh, the top two people in the regular season standings getting a round one bye. So first and second place don't have to play in the first round. They automatically go into the final six in round two. Uh, there's a few other various little bits and pieces of rules here and there, but they don't super matter for this, uh, this recap that I'm going to be doing for all of you guys out there. Uh, if anybody's interested, I can go over and I will go over a few things as the recaps go on, but that's about all that you need to know for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at my pool that I opened today and the deck that I built today in the opening tournament league. I will go over all of the matches that I went through and then do a quick recap of what was in my first pack and what uh, changes I will have made to my deck, as well as, of course, the overall standings for the league so you guys can keep track at home. So I opened up my pool and I registered all of the cards in it, and as you'll see a little bit later on, there's some things that I'm pretty darn excited about, but we're going to go through all the colors, the cards that I had, and the cards that uh, kind of stood out to me that made me think about playing and or not playing those colors. First up in white, we had a pair of Angelic Purges, a pair of Apothecary Geists, a pair of Dauntless Cathars, a pair of Stern Constables, and then a few other things, Town Gossip Monger, Vessel of Ephemera, Tenacity, Sir of the Night, Not Forgotten, Ethereal Guidance, and a Chaplain's Blessing. So, of course, in this little pile of cards here, I'm looking at Angelic Purges and saying, hey, those are pretty good. Those are probably the best white common. I'm pretty happy to see those. I'm pretty happy to see those Dauntless Cathars as well. I am not happy to see that Chaplain's Blessing and not happy to see that Not Forgotten. I'm just never going to play those two cards. The rest of the cards I could kind of take or leave. Some are ever so slightly better. Apothecary Geists, of course, I'll probably always play them, whereas uh, Survive the Night... 
ethereal guidance might not make the cut. But really, the only thing pulling me, pulling me into white is Angelic Purge and Dauntless Cathar. Uh, not too much going else on in white, unfortunately. Off in blue, I had a, a much larger pile of cards, but a lot more one-ofs compared to the white pile. Uh, compelling Deterrence, Essence Flux, Jace's Sc Scrutiny, Nagging Thoughts, Press for Answers, Sleep Paralysis, Welcome to the Fold, Pair of Vessel of Paramnesias, Pair of Drown Yard Explorers, Trail of Evidence, Drenau Corpse Trawler, Reckless Scholar, Seagraph Scab, and a Silent Observer. So looking at blue, I was not happy. Compelling Deterrence, Reckless Scholar, Welcome to the Fold, and Sleep Paralysis are all fine. They're cards that are totally going to pull me into blue, uh, some slightly more than others. Compelling Deterrence, of course, doesn't pull me into blue, but I say, hey, that's a really good card and I'll always play it. But then I also had Trail of Evidence, Vessel of Paramnesia, Times 2, Essence Flux, Jace's Scrutiny, and Seagraph Scab, most of which I would do my best not to play. Um, yeah, if Essence Flux targeted opponent's creatures as well, maybe, but targeting only my own creatures, I really don't care about it. Uh, Seagraph Scab would probably make some of my blue decks, but I'm certainly not going to be looking out for it. Uh, the rest of the cards were just kind of fine. They would make the deck, but they're not really going to pull me into it. So blue as well, not looking terribly powerful, definitely below white. Off into black and things are looking slightly better. We've got a Murderous Compulsion, Shambleback, Behind the Scenes, Sinister Concoction, a pair of Throttles, a pair of Farbog Revenants, an Heir of Falconrath, Pale Rider of Trostad, Rancid Rats, Vampire Noble, and an Elusive Tormentor. Now, of course, I'm pretty happy with a lot of these things. Happy with the Heir of Falconrath, happy with the Pale Rider, happy with the Rancid Rats, Elusive Tormentor, pair of Throttles, Murderous Compulsion, Sinister Concoction, happy about all of those cards. Shambleback, not happy with it, never going to play it. Behind the scenes, probably not going to play it. Even if I was black-white, I would have to be in a super wide deck to want to play behind the scenes. Farbog Revenants just barely missed getting a green check mark. I do like them. They're totally fine, and I would generally always play them, but they're not going to pull me into the uh, into the color. Same thing with Vampire Noble, but less good than Vam uh, Farbog Revenant. But yeah, black's looking pretty good. Tons of removal, a really, really good rare, a uh, pair of really good on commons definitely liking uh black here so black is definitely kind of uh pushed to the front a little bit for this pool off to red, and red's looking kind of similar to black. Pair of Fiery Tempers, Pair of Rush of Adrenaline's Geist Blast, Pair of Voldaren Duelists, A Wolf of Devil's Breach, uh, A Village Messenger, A Pair of Sanguinary Mages, A Mad Prophet, A Howlpack Wolf, Gatstaff Arsonist, and Blood Mad Vampire. Now, of course, I'm very happy to see those Fiery Tempers, especially given my history of uh, uh, Shadows Over Innistrad Sealed having terrible removal. Uh, it's nice to see a ton of it. Geist Blast, I'm also happy with. It, it barely gets a check mark, but it does. Pair of Voldaren Duelist, the Wolf, of course, and a Mad Prophet. And the nice thing is that every single other red card here is absolutely playable. I would play every single one of those cards in most decks. Uh, Rush of Adrenalines and Village Messengers might not get the cut in certain decks, but every single card in this pile I would feel totally okay, if not fantastic, playing. So I'm very happy with red in this pool. Off to green, and we've got another gigantic pile of cards. In fact, you can see it's really awkwardly laid out because I ran out of space while making this image. Pair of Aim Highs, Clip Wings, Fork in the Road, Howl Pack Resurgence, Root Oat, Second Harvest, Weirding Wood, Cult of the Waxy Moon, Graph Mole, Lambhold Pacifist, Veteran Cathar, Loam Dryad, Pair of Moldograph Scavengers, a Solitary Hunter, and a Stoic Builder. Now, I'm pretty happy to see the Howl Pack Resurgence, the Veteran Cathar, the Lambhold Pacifist, the Graph Mole, the Cult of the Waxing Moon. I'm not happy to see the Clip Wings, although it's totally fine in the sideboard, but it's just not a main deck card. Same with Root Out, Second Harvest, don't care about it, and Weirding Wood, don't really care about it, unless I was going for like a super multicolor deck. Now, the problem with the cards, in fact, arguably every card that got a check mark here except for Lambhole Pacifist is that they go in very specific decks. The Cult and the Howl Pack, those really want to be in Werewolf decks. The Graph Mole really wants to be in a Clue deck. The Veteran Cathar really wants to be in a Green White Humans deck. Uh, so while they're great cards, they require a whole lot else going on in the pool. Now unfortunately, as we've seen in the, the previous colors, there's no Clue deck in my pool. There's not really a Werewolf deck in my pool. There's not really a human deck in my pool. 
So unfortunately, while these are great cards, they didn't really shape out. Everything else was just kind of fine. Solitary Hunter, I guess. Moldograph Scavenger, again, I would require Delirium, and I just didn't have it. So green, as big as the pile was, and as many of uh, really solid uncommons and good cards there were, just didn't really seem terribly playable to me. Now that's not all. I had some multicolored cards, I had some lands, I had some artifacts, and of course I knew all of this, whereas you guys are only going to find this out now, and it was really kind of pulling me in some various directions. But without further ado, I had a Gitrog monster and a Sorin, so that was pretty good. I also had an explosive apparatus, a true faith sensor, a foreboding ruins, and a highland lake. Now, of course, Gitrog and Sorin are amazing, super big, gigantic green check marks for them. And foreboding ruins as well is totally fine. It gets a green check mark because, of course, if I'm in black red or in any way splashing, I will hands down be playing that card. Now, I got Torin in a number of different directions because Black Red really seemed like the absolute most strongest deck in my pool. That allowed me to think about splashing Gitrog and or Sorin, but my only fixing was Black Red and Blue Red. So I really kind of faced a dilemma here. I could potentially attempt to splash both the monster and Sorin, putting, I don't know, two planes and two forests, but that's going to hurt my mana base like crazy. So ultimately, I did decide to only splash one. Let me know in the comments below which you would have splashed, but let's take a look at the deck that I ended up with. And there you can see Soren in the top right hand corner. I did decide to go with Soren. I felt that he was a little bit more powerful than the Gitrog monster, especially for what I wanted to be doing. But this is the deck that I ended up with. Relatively aggressive. I did play the Village Messenger into uh, three two drops, a bunch of three drops. The four drops included the pair of Voldaren Duelists and the Elusive Tormentor. The Wolf was, of course, there at five. And then a huge removal suite with a Sinister Concoction, a Murderous Compulsion, a pair of Fiery Tempers, a Geist Blast, a pair of Throttles. I even played the Highland Lake for the potential chance of copying something with Geist Blast. I never did, um, but... You know, putting in a single tap land just really didn't seem like that big of a deal. It wasn't hurting my mana base too much, so I didn't terribly care uh, that I was kind of mising for that potential copy of a Murderous Compulsion or a Fiery Temper or a Throttle. But that's how the deck ended up, and I, I was pretty happy with it. I, I felt that this was one of the best sealed pools that I've ever opened in Shadows Over Innistrad and arguably anything. I was feeling pretty confident going into match one. Match one, I was up against Anton. Anton was playing black red as well, and he was being fairly aggressive. However, he did lack removal. Uh, he attempted to be aggressive. I attempted to be aggressive. I had not only some removal, but a lot of removal. And so I was able to just clear his board and uh, out aggressive him relatively quickly. I think we ended that game maybe around turn seven or so. Match two, he sided into an entirely different deck. He wasn't quite sure which deck he thought was uh, better, but he sided into blue green. Blue green had a lot of Briar Bridge patrols, a lot of byway couriers, at least a pair of each, if not three byway couriers. I can't remember offhand. Uh, he was able to really go up the board. It turns out a 3-3 three, three is uh, enough to kind of put my deck on the back heels for a little bit until I was able to get some removal. He even altered egoed my Wolf of Devil's Breach, uh, tapped it down a whole bunch with press for answers and Seagraph scabs and other ways of freezing it down. Luckily, I was able to bait him into attacking with his copy of my Wolf, and I was able to discard and kill it with Murderous Compulsion off the air of Falconrath. Uh, that was kind of enough to help me put the game away. Uh, my Wolf was able to start doing damage, my Gatstaff Arsonists came out and were menacey, and I was able to get through and win that match in two. Match two, I was up against Sean D. Sean D was playing red-green. In match one, he unfortunately massively flooded out. I think he ended up with something like eight lands on the board and not many creatures. But he was playing kind of a red-green aggressive deck. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he said he was playing only about 14 creatures, I think. He was a definitely a little bit creature light. Um, but he was attempting to be aggressive when he did get those creatures down. 
I at one point was facing down an obsessive Skinner, which I was terrified of being turned on. Luckily, he did not have delirium, and I was able to take care of it. In game two, I was even more aggressive. I swung for nine damage on turn four. The curve out of Air of Falconrath into a Howl Pack Wolf or a Vampire Novel or whatever into a Voldaren Duelist is huge. If my opponent stumbles and doesn't have two blockers, they are going to take a whole lot of damage. I was able to put that game away very quickly. We had something like 35 minutes left on the clock, but I was 2-0 and after winning match one and match two in two, feeling pretty good going into round three. Round three, I was up against Doug. Doug was playing Black Red as well, so every match that I've been up against has been up against Red. Black Red, uh, Red Green, and then Black Red again. Doug was super aggressive. He was pulling off one of my favorite combos, of course, Uncaged Fury, although he was doing Uncaged Fury plus Rush of Adrenaline, which, of course, gives the creature Trample, uh, whereas I often do it with Grotesque Mutation, which doesn't have Trample, but does give Lifelink. Uh, game one, I took him down pretty aggressively. Uh, he didn't really stand a chance. Game two, I made the mistake of blocking a 4-1 with my 1-1 Rat, and it hit me for 18. <laughs> trample. And I was just toast. I was dead. I was out of that game. Game three, we were trading back and forth. I was removing things. He was blocking things. Things were dying left and right. We started to really expand our boards and he decided, well, I'm going to attack in with everything because he felt that he was kind of on the back foot. Now, that was a bit of a bluff because he did have Rush of Adrenaline and Uncaged Fury and uh, it dealt me a lethal except for the fact that I blocked with a Farbog Revenant and gained one life. Now, Doug was also at one, and I had creatures to attack back with, but I ended the game at one life after the previous turn being at, I believe, 17. Um, but I held on, and I took that match down, but it did take me to game three to do that. Finally, into match four, the final match I'm playing to be undefeated in the opening tournament of the league, and I'm up against Matthew. Matthew's on green-white humans, and very unfortunately, he kept a two-lander with a couple of two-drops and didn't see a third land for many, many, many turns, and I took him down pretty handily in game one. Game two, he kept a two-lander with a couple of two-drops and again did not get to a third land. I think he might actually not have gotten to a third land, and I was much more aggressive in that second game. Again, the curve outs of Air of Falcon Wrath into anything into Voldaren Duelist is just super tough to handle. Elusive Tormentor came into a lot of use as well, getting in for the unblockable four damage. Just a solid card. But I took down the opening tournament 4-0, and a great place to be starting into the league. That does give me a pretty high standing and a pretty good chance to make it into the top 10. With six weeks left, I would have to crash and burn to not make it. Um, but... Feeling pretty confident with this deck. I think it's doing really well. Soren never once hit the table. Not once. But I did have him in my hand at least. And I did always see my planes, luckily. Um, so I do think the three planes is kind of uh, where I want to be. I didn't unfortunately get to copy anything with Geist Blast. So I am potentially looking at cutting that at some point. But overall, I'm very, very happy with the deck. But let's take a look at the pack that I opened. I opened up uh, Spectral Shepherd, Devil Thorn Fox, Thraben Inspector, Gone Missing, Catalog, uh, Hinterland Logger, Byway Courier, Shard of Broken Glass, and Haunted Cloak in the colors that I don't currently care about. In the colors I do care about, black and red, I got a Grotesque Mutation, a Hound of the Farbogs, a Gibbering Fiend, a Structural Distortion, and a Burn from Within. Unfortunately, this pack was not terribly good for me outside of that Burn from Within, which of course is definitely going into the deck and we'll take a look at what I'm going to replace that with in just a second. Uh, Gibbering Fiend I don't think is going to quite make it. I just don't really go for Delirium at all so I just don't think it's any better than any of the other two drops that I'm currently running. Structural Distortion of course can sit in the sideboard for Westvale Abbey maybe but not really. Uh, grotesque Mutation probably won't make it in. I prefer the removal over the combat tricks, and Hound just isn't going to make it either. The other cards aren't really going to pull me into the, any, of the, any of the other colors. The Thraben Inspector uh, and the Fox make the white ever so slightly better. The Courier and the Logger make green ever so slightly better, but nowhere on the power of black-red, I don't think. So let's take a look at my deck and potential changes. 
This was the 4-0 deck as I had it. The only card that I really want to put in is the Burn From Within, and I think I want to replace a spell with it. I'm pretty happy with the creatures. I have 15. So really, I'm kind of looking at replacing one of the Throttles or potentially the Geist Blast, and I think I am going to go with the Geist Blast becoming a Burn From Within. That means as well that I can cut the Highland Lake. I can go into straight uh, re uh, mountains and swamps, uh, as well as three planes for Soren and and uh, potentially at some point replace that Highland Lake that used to be there with something more applicable like a Forsaken Sanctuary. But that's going to be my change for week one. This is the deck that I'm going to take into uh, the first week of League, the uh, the first actual League Nights, and see if I can keep up the 4-0. Just to wrap up, not terribly exciting this week, but here are the standings for the league as it currently stands. These names obviously mean a lot more to people who actually know the people playing, but just so you people can follow at home how I'm doing and how everybody else is doing, here are the standings. These will, of course, be more exciting week to week when you can actually see the changes of people, but there I am up at number one, currently leading. Who knows if I can actually hang on to it? Uh, you might notice my opponent match win percentage is a little bit low especially compared to uh, Matthew K there and Doug S down there in eighth place. Uh, so who knows if I can hang on to that first spot, especially as people start to get uh, uh, more and more wins. But I'll keep it up. I will try to win. Uh, I've actually won the last two leagues back to back. I have little faith in actually uh, pulling off a three-peat, but uh, I'll certainly go for it. But there are the standings as they currently stand. It's going to wrap it up for the very first league recap. This one's definitely a little bit longer than uh, most will be. Of course, I won't be going over my deck and my pool in depth every single week. I'll simply be going over the pack that I opened, any changes that I made, and how the matches went. Definitely let me know if you enjoy this. Uh, if you're a league member and watching this, or if you're not a league member and watching this, let me know in the comments below. But as always, if you have any questions, comment or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at TheManaLeak, that's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card, and you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash TheManaLeak. You've already found me here on YouTube, make use of that comment section. If you like my videos, click that little thumbs up icon, it makes me feel good, but it also helps the videos rise up through the ranks. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. There's a link below each video, there's one in the outro of each video, and clicking that will keep you up to date on all the latest videos as they get posted. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see y'all next time.